Hello, hello, and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today's video, we are going to continue our Bible study. We've started in the book of 1 Corinthians, and we are on chapter 8 today. And uh, this particular chapter is going to go into a lot of discussion regarding the conscience of man. Uh, but before we go into the actual reading, of 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I'm led to go ahead and give you these scriptures first to go along with this Bible study. So it's going to start with Matthew chapter 25. And then Matthew chapter 25, Jesus Christ is speaking. <clears throat> and he says, uh, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these brothers in the kingdom, that you have done this unto me. Okay? And this is just taking us into what Christ has to say in reference to defilement as an option by an individual in the kingdom of God, and then thereby them going into doing whatever it is that they're doing that defiles them in their relationship with God, another saint may see that particular behavior and think that it's okay to copy that behavior. And then in them doing that, they defile themselves also. So in doing that, this is what Christ is saying, that in a person, whenever a person does something you know, like that, they are also doing that unto Christ Jesus too helping him basically it would be like saying Christ is basically saying you're helping me to sin against myself okay and that is for the revelation again for this Bible study reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 that we're getting ready to get into right now so now I'm going to go over into it Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 8 we're going to look at and I'll bring it up whenever we get to the actual part that we did prior to going into our study. Okay, so First Corinthians, now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. And knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies, okay? And that's very good to know because love is what will edify you. Love will build you up. And whenever you begin to see an individual going forward with the word of God, again, that is very wise information to take into consideration <clears throat> and know that the fact that if you're being edified, if you're being built up, if you are being informed, if you are being made aware, if you are receiving revelations, if God is speaking through a person and he is revealing himself through that particular person uh, as it pertains to his word or what may be going on in their lives uh, as it pertains to an intercessory prayer, whatever if it is going through toward a person going through a person and it's a representation of the kingdom then we know that it is being done by the spirit of love by God because it is, it is intentionally okay that is the intention of the kingdom of God to edify to build up not to condemn okay so this particular verse is very good to be made aware of okay because he tells us here that we know knowledge puffs up Okay, so the one that is just basically speaking with knowledge, okay, and it may not be through the power of the Holy Ghost, and it may not be through what God, what God is saying, okay, to the kingdom of God, and it's just going to be knowledge, and it's just going to puff the person up, but, edi but God's spirit and his teaching edifies, it will build you up, you will become more informed okay you will become more aware of what god is saying what god is doing of his word of his spirit of everything of revelations that pertain to him in the kingdom so verse 2 says and if any man think that he knows anything he knows nothing yet as he ought to know but if any man love god the same is known of him okay as concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. 
We know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one God, and that is our Heavenly Father, our Holy God of Heaven. So now he's getting ready, Paul is getting ready to uh, explain to them the importance of idol worship not a, and not being engaged in it and how it affects the conscience because once an individual has been birthed into the kingdom of God, they're born again of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and that Holy Ghost occupies their conscience. That's why an individual, like you may not understand, but you know, you may feel like something is saying not to go here, not to go there. Well, that's the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Spirit. Once you've been born again of the Holy Spirit, or you may feel like uh, you see something and you feel like, well, that's just not right. It's not just, that's the Holy Spirit telling you that's just not right. That's the Holy Ghost revealing to you through the power of your conscience that what is going on, what you're seeing, or whatever, even if you're getting, you're doing something, it's the conscience. The Holy Spirit, because an individual is baptized, uh, and that is where the Holy Ghost resides. It resides in the conscience. And therefore, whenever an individual begins to become an idol worship, to worship any other God, that's where that particular idol drops his knowledge and his insight into the conscience of mankind. And so therefore, they become... Uh, a robot to the idol that they have become one with and I use the word robot because that's basically how the conscious operates you know we become a robot to the Holy Spirit because we're it's basically our compass our center point our center of being okay our center our our center of our human humanity being because it basically guides us, okay? It'll lead us whenever there's something that seems to be operating correctly and we can't understand, you know, why. Well, the Holy Ghost in your conscience will actually let you know. And in the Holy Ghost baptizing your conscience, okay, it's going to make you strong, okay? It gives you strength because it's the Heavenly Father. It's our Holy God. It's our Creator, uh, but if there's an other idol that becomes centered in the conscience of man, it weakens you. It weakens your strength in the Lord also because it weakens your relationship with God. And it places you in a position of defilement, out of file, out of alignment, out of order with the kingdom of God. So going forward here, he says, so for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods, there are many, and lords, there are many, he says, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, and by whom are all things, and we are by him, okay? So how be it that there is not in every man that knowledge, okay? So every man does not have that particular knowledge in him. They don't know that God is the one true God, like you and I may know, okay? They have not been informed, is what he is telling us there in the word of God. Not every man has that knowledge in them that God is the one true God, and that their own, that their only uh, perception and their only uh, level of doctrine that they should stand on as it pertains to who they are as a human being, how they exist in the earth, and who their creator was, that it exists from the foundations of God Almighty, our Heavenly Father. Okay, so he's telling us, not all men have that knowledge, and they do not. And that's for sure. And so there, let's go ahead on to our next verse. He begins to tell them that, uh, verse 7, how, how be it, there is not in every man that knowledge, okay, that knowledge of God. For some with their conscience of the idol, okay, they still have conscience of the idol. And that would pertain to any any individual that is not a part of the kingdom of God, okay, who have not been born again by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, 
they have an idol operating in their conscience and they don't even know that, okay? But the reason being is because they have no knowledge of God. You don't really find out about an idol that you've ever worshipped until you come into contact and the knowledge of God. You've been enlightened somehow by the power of his presence. So he says that uh, for some with conscience of the idol, unto this hour they eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. And that's just talking about eating sacrifices, you know. And I mean, one thing that you can uh, just off the top of your head think about as a sacrifice that some people use that they eat is would be blood, okay, unfortunately. If you've ever heard of that and uh, ever watched any type of documentary or anything that would pertain to idol worship, blood is somehow always in the mix. Okay, so uh, verse 8 says, But meat commends us not to God. For neither if we eat are we, be are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay? And that's just going into basically recapping on the first verse that we read whenever we first read uh, our first Bible scripture for this Bible study that came to us from the book of Matthew 25, uh, verse 40, where Christ is saying that whenever an individual begins to operate in a uh, this out of order format before the presence of another saint, they may lead them into doing the same thing. And in doing that, he's saying to uh, make sure that you take heed to what you are doing because you're leading, it's like leading him into committing a sin and therefore weakening his temple, okay, because that person will be a part of the kingdom of God, they will be born again of the Holy Spirit, they will be filled with the Holy uh, Holy Ghost, so therefore they will be a temple unto God Almighty, his temple in the earth. So he says to take heed to doing things like that, because you can also make that individual um, become weak, and their conscience be defiled, and therefore leading them into uh, you know stumbling before the Almighty God. Now verse ten says, "For if any man see you which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to the idols?" Again, same conversation going back to. Uh, the scripture we started with Matthew chapter 25 and verse 40. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish from whom Christ died. So, but when you see, but when you, I'm sorry, so, but when you sin, so against your brother, okay, and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world stands, lest I make my brother to offend. And those last verses just go into the explanation of why I read uh, the book, Matthew 25, verse 40, because it goes into explaining the proper behavior in the kingdom of God toward one another and how one brother can make another brother sin. And if another one brother makes another brother sin, this is what he has to say. But when you sin so against the brother and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. It's a sin against Christ. And therefore, Christ has already informed us in Matthew that if you do that to him, to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And therefore, doing and committing a sin unto them will make you in opposition to God, okay? And then place you in a position of, uh, unfortunately, being in the category of receiving his wrath. All right, so that, let me see here. I think that's going to bring me to the conclusion of this Bible study. Uh, 
1 Corinthians chapter 8, where we're taking a look at Paul edifying the people, the saints of God in the city of Corinth. And he just went over some basic uh, instructions regarding the conscience and then also basic instructions regarding the brotherhood and how one individual in the kingdom can sin and cause another individual in the kingdom to sin. And then that can be a defilement from both individuals, of course, and then place both of them in a position of being weak by the conscience and then uh, placing them in a position of wrath to receive God's wrath because of the sin against their body. And they've already, and they've been uh, born again into the kingdom. Okay. All right. So that is the conclusion of this Bible study. God bless you. And I will see you on our next Bible study video as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel.